white for the hands that stole this land, white for every so-called prime minister, every leader that came after the fact, white for the lies that slipped from the white lips to protect their white children in their blanketed white sheet land, white faces, white lies, white sheep. But the red is no better. Red for the bloodshed of people you call redskins. Red for the bloodshed of slaves. Red for the bloodshed of young black boys targeted by police. Red for the bloodshed of missing and murdered indigenous women. Red for the bloodshed of brown people labeled terrorists. Red for the soil. For if you remove that crisp white sheet from under your feet, you'll come to know that it's been an illusion all along. Yeah, Under the white right. sheet lies soil stained red from the bloodshed. We live in a country built on bloodshed. I am not proud to be a Canadian because Canadian is a lie. These borders are a lie. The government is a lie. Justin Trudeau saying time and time again that he cares about the livelihood of indigenous people as he signs a check for another pipeline is a lie. I wish I could believe in the lie that I was born in the land of the free, but I can't find comfort or freedom in a land built on the genocide of one group and the enslavement of another. So until then, the only red and white I can wear is the white knuckles in my clenched fist being held high in the air, and the red in my angry face as I demand to see change. I am not proud to be a Canadian. But that was being made complicit, including uh, included by the Canadian government, which is complicit in past and ongoing genocide. And that really, really struck, struck me. Um, so I'm honored to be here today. Uh, this is, this is the, the, the evils of colonialism and imperialism and the plight of indigenous peoples is a global truth. This happens everywhere, and it's it's everybody's duty to protect the protectors of the land. Um, so I wrote this poem um, last week, and I'm referencing some Armenian 
uh, pagan gods and goddesses. And I reference one fruit in particular, which is the apricot. The apricot is indigenous to Armenia as I am. Um, ancestral trauma is something that I feel deeply. My great grandparents were slaughtered in their village in 1915. Um, my great grandmother was raped. My great grandfather was made to watch. An unborn baby was pulled from her womb. He was made to watch and then they were both hung from a tree as their children watched. And that is how I know this story because their youngest child was my grandfather. Um, so I stand here in solidarity and in, in a shared pain. So um, without further ado, I'll read my poem. It's called Metamorphosis. I was born like Astrik, like Anahit, like Tsovinaj and Nane, an anomaly of being. From the Ararat Plains to a candle lit in some South African riverbank, my genesis came baptized in blood and in poetry. You tell me we are not warriors when the thunder of our feet reaches our gods on mountain tops, shaking the cranes from their nests and the songs from the hills. You tell me we are not dreamers when our love is born from ruins and paints the ashes of burnt temples on our lips. I tell you, Ararat is in my face. If you do not believe me, kiss. Know that Semiramis shaped the curve of my cheeks. I tell you, the heavens are in my body. If you do not believe me, touch. Know that Gisha Ravoj, the evening star, graces my skin with her light. I tell you, I taste of apricot. My land is my people and my rivers wine. If you do not believe me, drink. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much for sharing a little bit of your story. Your words are extremely powerful. <laughs> um, if there's anybody else who would like to speak, by all means. No? Okay. <laughs> so I wanted to talk a little bit about why we're here, um, about the nations that are under attack right now. So there's several nations that are under attack right now. Um, or I mean, all nations are under attack all the time. That's just the reality of colonialism. But there's several nations that are experiencing elevated levels of colonial violence right now, which is why we're here. We're standing in solidarity with them. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about what's going on in each of the nations. Um, so we'll start with the Mi'kmaq Nation, uh, because that one's one of the most popularized at the moment. <laughs> um, so the Mi'kmaq people right now are being criminalized for fishing as ridiculous as that sounds. Um, so what's happening right now is basically there's arguments going on between the indigenous Mi'kmaq people and the white settlers, the white commercial fishers of that land who are saying that the indigenous Mi'kmaq fishers are somehow going to overfish their fish stock, which is very weird to think that the Mi'kmaq fishers feel as though they have ownership over the land that the Mi'kmaq people have been on for thousands, hundreds of years. And so this is resulting in many incidents of violence against the Mi'kmaq people. There have been buildings belonging to the Mi'kmaq people that have been burned. They have watched one of their chiefs get, what's happening? What's happening? <laughs> okay, so uh, in the Mi'kmaq nation, uh, they're experiencing increased levels of violence, as, I've, as I'm saying. Um, and the RCMP aren't doing anything about it. The RCMP are encouraging colonial violence by standing by and watching. And if it was the other way around, the jails would be filled with hundreds of Mi'kmaq fishers. 
if it was the other way around and Mi'kmaq people were setting their shit on fire, they would jail us. They would have no, they would have no hesitation for jailing us because they jail us for standing on bridges. They, stare, they jail us for standing on railroads. They jail us for walking in the street. We don't even have to be blocking anything. If you're an indigenous person, you're criminalized. Yeah, please. Sure. On, on that note, uh, uh, yeah, for sure. On that note, just really quick. So the cops are circling with body cams. I'm not gonna hide it from any of you. I want you to be very aware that what you are doing right now is being recorded. Um, my advice to you is to grab friends when you're going to do the things that you are going to do and have them circle you so the cops cannot see your face. Everyone, except for me, because I'm a brat, should be wearing a mask. Uh, I'm very visible, so there's no point in me trying to hide myself. I'm like Clifford the Big Red Activist. There's nothing. <laughs> I, I'm very visible. So um, I'm just going to tell everyone, like, hide your face as much as possible. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. Like, make sure that nobody can see you. Um, because, yeah, that's a thing. Also, there's always a chance of arrest at these kinds of events. That's something you know when you attend a protest. But if for any reason someone cannot be arrested, I recommend leaving imminently. Also, we like to do things in twos, as Sebastian, my co-organizer, just mentioned. Um, so if people need pals to go with them, if they have to leave for whatever the reason may be, please take a buddy, come find one of the organizers, one of the people who've been talking on the mic today, and uh, we'll find someone to go with you. Thank you, I'm gonna hand it back to Cricket now. Amazing, as we're talking about police violence. <laughs> Um, yeah, so as I was saying, the Mi'kmaq people are under threat right now for exercising their own right to fish and hunt. And so that's why we're standing in solidarity with the Mi'kmaq fishers. I'll move over to the Sequetmik territory out west, uh, which are one of the other nations that are experiencing elevated levels of colonial violence. Uh, there's a pipeline that's been trying to be built through uh, Sequetmik territory for a few years now. And uh, people, activists like Conahus Manuel and the Tiny House Warriors have been uh, fighting against this pipeline, land defending on the front lines for years. Kanahus Manuel had her wrist broken by the RCMP for de land defending. Shame! Shame! And so the reality is that not only does a pipeline through Sequetmik and Wet'suwet'en, which I'll get into after Sequetmik, uh, threaten the, the waters and the land, it disrupts um, during a global pandemic, bringing man camps to indigenous territory is extremely unethical and once again proves that the Canadian government believes that indigenous bodies are disposable by having them, ele having them at elevated exposures to coronavirus, to COVID-19, um, as well as man camps have been proven to have direct correlations with missing and murdered indigenous women, which we spoke on earlier. Because when you have, sorry, when you have these larger groups of men and they're drinking and they're on this more isolated area and the only women that are close by are indigenous women and these men are getting drunk, what do you think they're doing? They're going into these territories. They're harassing the people. They're harassing the women. They're taking the women. And the RCMP don't care. They encourage this too because another dead Indian is good for them. And so we'll move on to Wet'suwet'en territory, experiencing a si similar problem with the coastal gasoline pipeline. So a few of you might remember the shutdown Canada movement that happened in February that was all because of the CGL pipeline that was being pushed through Wet'suwet'en territory. So the thing about Wet'suwet'en territory is that the water is so clean that you can drink straight from the river. There's not many rivers like that left in Canada. Before settlers came, before colonizers came, all the rivers were like that in Canada. And so this not only threatens the water, but it th threatens their hunting rights, their immediate hunting grounds. Because with the increased levels of construction that are going on right now in the Wet'suwet'en territory, it's affecting the environment. 
Sorry, I keep breathing in like this. Which is why I'm coughing. But um, it's a the, so with the disruption of the environment, the direct disruption of the environment, and what's so in its territory. <laughs> Sorry. So with the direct uh, disruption of Wet'suwet'en territory, it obviously has a direct correlation with the environment and the habitats, and it's already messing with the animals. They're already scared. They're already moving to other territories. They're moving away from the construction. And they're scared. They don't know what that is. And so because of that, it's disrupting the natural flow of the hunting grounds and the hunting season. And so the Wet'suwet'en people are having trouble accessing food and accessing the same levels of hunting that they would before. And so this is in the direct violation of Canada's own law under Section 35. And if you don't know what Section 35 is, I recommend more homework. I, rem I recommend you Googling what Section 35 is. Uh, another nation that is under threat right now is the Algonquin people. And so the Algonquin people right now they are on their hunting season. Our, do you want to speak to the, actually, Sam was actually at the Algonquin Territory in solidarity with them, so I'll let him speak on that. Sweet, thank you, Sweetie. Um, my name's Sam Wong. Um, I'm Mitzi from, my family's from, oh, uh, my family's from Kalahu, Alberta. Um, I'm also of like Chinese and Euro settler heritage. Um, yeah, so I'll speak a little bit about the Moose Moratorium on Algonquin Territory. I just thought I'd let Cricket, since she's Anishinaabe. Um, but what's been happening there is the, the Algonquins of Barrier Lake, which is one of the Algonquin reserves in Quebec, um, a few years ago, for the last yeah, several years, have noticed that the moose population has been dwindling. And um, in response to that, they tried to spread awareness in the community, in the indigenous community, but also um, in the uh, like white settlers community, because there's a whole like, association and everything there. They kind of use their eggs for having a moose in detail per season, or obviously per season. Um, There's been a collection of Algonquin people and also supporters um, from Ottawa. I grew up in Ottawa, so um, I, I know some people that uh, told me to come out because uh, they, it was uh, rifle season was opening the next day and they were expecting that a lot of hunters would be coming in and trying to uh, get through um, the checkpoints. There were several checkpoints set up along the highway that kind of goes into Le, Le Vallandrie Park which is uh, the area they're trying to protect. Um, so they pretty much been camping out there. There's no uh, way of actually like protecting all the moose that are there um, because the park's so big. Uh, but they're just trying to make life a little bit harder um, on the uh, non-indigenous hunters to get in. And um, unfortunately, there have been four moose, like at least four, um, that the Algonquins have found in the bush where the head was just chopped off and the body was left to rot of the moose. Um, and the head was taken as trophy. So a lot of these um, 
like white hunters are going into the space and taking the heads for trophies and then leaving the body. But the thing is, the Algonquins have been um, relying on the moose as an essential part of their diet for a very long time. And um, it's an essential part of their culture, and it, uh, it's a food that sustains the people. So it's not only an attack on the moose, but it's also an attack on the people. And that's why um, the Algonquins are so passionate about protecting the moose. And that's what they've been doing in this Land Back Lane have been occupying space for over a hundred days now. Yeah. <laughs> so basically they're impeding on uh, Six Nations land rights by, um, with urban development. Um, that's what's happening. And they've, uh, they've recently been targeting uh, the indigenous people who are occupying space with rubber bullets. They've shot them with rubber bullets. They've uh, pepper sprayed indigenous women. And they're just experiencing extremely high levels of colonial violence. And so I'm just going to read a statement that I have from Six Nations. OK. The days of forcing indigenous peoples off of their territories are over. Colonial policies and police have tried to push us off our lands for far too long. Across Turtle Island, indigenous people have always found ways to resist colonization and today, one of our strongest weapons is solidarity. For the past, this is outdated, so it's not 104 days anymore. But for the past 104 days, people at 1492 Land Back Lane have been actively resisting the ongoing development of our lands. We have been pulled into the Canadian court systems. We have been criminalized raided, shot at with rubber bullets, and tasered. Yeah. But we are still here, and we are still resilient. We will not sit by and watch our land be developed. We will not sit by and watch our rights disappear. As free and sovereign people, our nation have to survive, always resist, found and fight back. Our nations have our own treaties and relationships that predate colonial interference and solidarity is as, is as important today as it has ever been. We at 1492 Land Back Lane and the people of Six Nations stand in solidarity with indigenous peoples everywhere who are taking land back from colonizers. We thank everyone for being here today, and we invite you all to continue to stand in solidarity with us. Solidarity now, unity forever, land back everywhere. Signed, 1492, Land Back Lane. tell you guys everything I'm gonna be honest because something happened to me and I don't think it's fair and the fact that I'm here today I feel like it's a blessing because I was going to the mall to be honest with you guys and I want to tell you guys I'm proud of you guys for what you're doing and most definitely I want to say that you guys are doing absolutely nothing wrong. You have all right to what's yours. It's yours, it's, it's yours, period. 
If it's yours, it's yours. If it's your mom buys, it's yours. Period. So I'm Jamaican, born and raised. I only came here for school, nothing more. I played for Jamaica at the age of 15. I got into three car accidents in Canada and none of them was my wrong. I was diagnosed with depression because every single night I would wake up with a car hitting me in the head and I would not sleep properly. All that happened, I'm intelligent, I'm artistic, and everything, that's art. So when I look out, I see beautiful people, period. I'm not gonna preach, but I don't give a fuck, period. Police can go suck their mom, period. And just a little bit about me, I'm Jamaican, Irish, Ghanaian, and native. But I'm Jamaican native. My mom is indigenous and my dad is half white. My last name is B-U-R-R-E-L-L. -L. It means distant relative to the queen of fucking England. I don't give a fuck so I can say whatever the fuck I want. Another thing, you guys may know the famous singer Shaggy. She called me on the camera, it wasn't me. That's my fucking family. Period. Now I'm going to turn to the fucking police and say fuck the police. Period. Because they came to my fucking home, arrest me for no fucking reason, and lock me up in a mental prison for two fucking years. Two motherfucking years. And I got out because I fucking studied nursing here in fucking Canada. I wanted to help people. Now I do not. I only want to be a fighter. MMA, period. So every time I see shit like this, I'm going to take the fucking mic and say fuck the police. <laughs> black life do matter, but it makes no fucking sense because black life matter in all fucking institutions. If you don't understand what that means, you don't make no sense, period. So fuck the police. I would sing because I rap as well, but I don't want to be disrespectful because we already did a lot of damage. Period. <laughs> Let's get back on track. <laughs> you can follow me on social media, problem fucking child. All the L's are one because it's all unity. So the police can come find me because I don't give a fuck. Because the Queen of England is my fucking cousin. It's a royal flush. Let me show you how it's royal flush and you guys are going to get back your fucking land because I'm suing the government. And I'm suing Toronto police so they can go suck their mom. So now they can come and you guys leave and I will get arrested so they can fuck themselves, period. Form 3, 
four, four, and now they have me in a four forty-five because they can't take my fucking energy. No. All I want to say is this: if Bob Marley was alive, he would have been proud of you guys. So that's all I have to say. personal because you know I I lost my mom when I was six years old she was murdered in Calgary so I'm 62 that happened when I was young six uh, how many years ago you know so there was no justice for her death and um, so you know it was back then you know it was way back then our women were going missing or they were murdered and nobody gives a fuck so you know what? I'm gonna keep speaking for my mom. And I'm also gonna keep speaking for Georgina Pappen. My sister, my cousin, my relative, they found her remains at the Picton Farm in Vancouver. So yeah, this is fucking personal. You know, and um, I'm a survivor. I'm a fucking warrior. You know, because I was put on this land to fight for the injustice of our people. Because it was in our prophecy, the seven prophecies, the creation story. It's there. It's written in that blood memory. So, we gotta stand up, keep standing. Don't fucking sit down. As long as you don't threaten, as long as you don't use no violence, they cannot charge you. And this is your right. This is your fucking right. I fought many battles against the government, and I won four fucking times. You know, so check me, check me in the law book. I'm there, Joan Twin. So you know what? I'm here because I, not to big myself up or put another notch in my belt, because to me, that's not fucking important. What's important is the injustice of our people. <laughs> land back, land back, land back, land back. The sisters that are locked up. Your sister, your auntie, your grandmother, or some relative that's locked up in the bin. Your youth, the women, the brothers. We have to unlock them prison walls. We gotta unlock the fucking cages. Cause they are missing too. They are missing, and you know what? We need to get them back out here because they belong with us. Freedom is a must. Anyways, I'm, I'm actually really um, humble to be here in the middle of a fucking four corner street. It's better than walking in a fucking cube, a cell. You know, and um, I've always been told this is my earth right here. So I feel safe. You know? There I got my job. I'm not afraid of them cops. I'm not afraid of the government. I'm not afraid of any human. 
I am a woman with 50 lives. I've been here before. And I will always be here in spirit. Because we will win this fucking war. All we need to do for us is put a little bit of love and kindness. That's it. That's all. And you know what? We are on the seventh fire. The only way the eighth fire will be lit is if there is peace, love, kindness. You know what? And then the eighth fire will be lit. It will be the rainbow. That is what's going to happen. That's in the prophecy. Why don't you? Why don't you? Take it out. Look at those races, motherfucker, eh? You can see Mars, right? Well, you know what? I stood up to many people like you. Yeah, why don't you just kindly leave because you're not welcome here. Okay. That's when the police gotta step in. That's how you do it. You see? I knew that negative was gonna come in. I felt that. But I didn't know what it was. There you go. That's what we go through every fucking day. But you know what? That's okay. There's gonna be hundreds more coming after him. But you know what? I'm ready. Let's sing, let's dance. Let's go, Hardy! Put that a little bit of heart, a little bit of soul, you know, and let your feet do the moving. You know? Let your heart move with your with your feet. With your moccasins. And this girl here, you know, and um, I'll pray for her. Hi, sister. <laughs> okay. I love you too. You see? We don't judge. I, want, I am a fucking addict. You know? So we don't judge because people are messed up. You know, I've been messed up. So you know what? I I've been judged all my fucking life, and I don't like being judged now. But you know what? Let's dance. Woo!
we have a request. This is for all you sacred beauties, the women, and also for the men. That, you know, we have to have that balance because we're all two twin spirit. So, let's do it. Oh, the song, uh, Strong Women Song, came from uh, from us when we we're, you know, from prison for women in Kingston. Amen. And this is a time that, you know, the women and the sisters were struggling inside within the prison walls. And so there was a lot of suicides at that time because for whatever reason they took their lives, you know. But every day I think of my sisters, you know, I lost. You know, and but they, you know, the way I, when I look at it now, they gave up their lives for change. Because we have to give up a life, something, to get something. But it's a deadly price to pay.
I thought maybe we could do uh, the butterfly song, which you heard very briefly. I changed some of the lyrics earlier, earlier. Um, but I thought we'd do like a longer version of it. Um, it's my favorite song to sing. Um, my family is a generation of singers. When I sing, I feel connected to the earth and connected to my ancestors. And I, I'm sure many can attest that when we hit that drum, that's the heartbeat of our people. And when we sing that song, that's our ancestors singing with us. It's so important, it's so vital, and music music is, is life just like water is life. Um, and so this song is called The Butterfly Song. It is a song about transformation. If any of you have ever read that book, The Hungry, Hungry Caterpillar, you know that at the end of the book, the caterpillar eats all the stuff and he becomes a butterfly. I teach this to kids, by the way. That's, <laughs> that's where all this is coming from. So um, the idea here is that we ha have the ability to transform. And more than that, we have the ability to change our narrative. And here in Canada, or so-called Canada, the narrative for a very long time has been that Canadian culture is poutine and hockey. <laughs> and please. And so we are moving away from that, and I think that the narrative is changing, and I hope that you all join me in singing this song so that we can make that new reality possible, that butterfly transformation, metamorphosis possible. Okay, okay, okay. I got it, I got it. All right, you guys want to start a beat and I will match. It's just a single beat, yeah. Wait.
all here and we're talking so much about transformation, I want to talk about something else that's so important in our communities. We had an interaction with someone today and that person didn't understand. And I want to talk about the older generations and how they teach us and we teach them every day. And how that, that, those lessons can be made, that, that bridge can be gapped, and how we lead with the seven grandfather teachings and in kindness. There are times where we fuck the patriarchy. There are times where we say, nah, not today. And then there are times where we have the energy to educate and to, and to be soft and to be gentle and to lead with that honor and to be grounded and to hear people out. And so I just want to talk about how I've come to find that in my own self. And that has been through the wisdom of my ancestors and through the wisdom of my elders, my grandmother, my Coca, the people in my life who I am the most close to who have taught me that humility and that grounding. And I think that we can apply that every day to what we do as activists. There is definitely a need to be hardcore, spray paint, fuck shit up activists, right? There are days for that. And there are days for how can I bridge this gap for you? Because you know what? The revolution, it lies in changing the minds of people who would otherwise feel that we are bad or who would otherwise not understand our cause, right? If you take time to educate people, I have seen this change. There are people you will never be able to change their mind. And you know what? Leave them at the side. Trump, leave him, right? Like there's people like that, you'll never change their mind. But there's people out there, and I'm telling you this, where when you say, hey, can we have a conversation about this? They're willing to learn and they're willing to grow. And it, it's not easy. Listen, that's labor. I started charging for it, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I started going out and being like, y'all wanna learn about my culture? Pay me, pay me. <laughs> Which, by the way, hit me up on Instagram if y'all want me to come and drum at your thing. Like, shameless plug. Uh, but also, there's also times where because people, especially like allies, are able to give me those funds, I'm able to sustain my body, sustain my life, and then I can go out and do work like what I'm doing today. And what I will continue to do, and what I encourage all of you to do. Take my words, take my wisdom, and leave, well, not right now there, but like when, when, when things are over, leave with that humility in your heart. Leave with that, how can I sort of reach out today in a good, kind way? And let me tell you, if you don't have the energy because you've been through it, that's okay too. That's not your journey. That's not what Creator has for your heart. Your journey is to spray paint the ground and like put your fist up in the air and sing and scream and make your voice heard. But if you have the energy to be one of those movers that does so with sort of a, a quiet heart, if you can do that, Please, share that. So I'm wondering if any of my drummers have a song that they'd like to do. a big request, I know. It's okay, I, we're, there's some stuff going on right now, but I wanna keep things flowing. So I think we're gonna do some chants for now, and then we will get back to the drumming in a bit. We're just gonna give our drummers a little bit of a break for now, because we've been doing consistent drumming, but we also wanna keep it hyped. So I want to remind folks that if you need to sit on the ground, that is okay, that like that's what the ground is there for. Um, as you can see, my butt is firmly planted in a seating position, so I cannot say shit. I encourage you all to sit if you need to sit. Um, I do want to let somebody maybe take the mic if they're interested who is doing uh, an encampment and has been doing an encampment for a bit now, no? Okay, never mind. <laughs> But I should say that there's some youth who are holding things down in, on, in the Dawes area and they've been doing a fantastic job and I'm just like, yeah, they're, no? No, he's not, he's not into it today, but you should know that they've been holding things down and they're awesome and, uh, and they, they're anonymous and they shall not be named, but they are awesome. <laughs> uh, all right, so I wanna do some chants. So what we're gonna start with is, uh, when I say land, you say back, okay? Thank you. When I say land, you say back, land! Back! Land! Back. When I say land, you say back, land! Back! Land! Back. When I say land, you say back, land! Back! Land! Back. Woo! Back. Woo! Back. All right, so I hear lots of 
jinglies and lots of like sort of like other instruments. I thought we could get up a good beat with those jinglies and then we could start like a chant beat kind of like thing. Like the people united will never be defeated. 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 The will never be defeated. I say the
I got it, I got it. It's U G L Y C G L U T N Y U ugly. <laughs> Yeah, there's... Ah! Anyways, 
know this is some some jagannashi shit but i'm gonna sing it because i feel like if you don't sing this song then what are you really doing at a protest uh all right so here's the thing about community <laughs> community is so special to me you guys are the lifeblood i wake up in the morning and i'm like how can i be with my people today i 
think that during this time of uncertain or uncertainty and just not knowing what is next, it's community that runs through our blood and veins and keeps us connected to everyone. So today I'm going to sing a little song that you should all know um, about togetherness and leaning on each other in tough times. Yes, it's lean on me. <laughs> Sometimes in our lives we all have pain. We all have so But if we are wise, we know that there's always two more. Oh, this is a sing along. Lean on me when you're not strong, and I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. Oh, it won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. Please swallow your pride if I can't think. You need to follow because no one can feel those of you that you won't let show. Everybody lean on me when you're not strong and I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. When you need it, when you need a friend, can you call me? Lean on me. Does anybody else have a good voice? I would like. Yeah. Also, I am not shy about the fact that I can sing. I would love to hear people. Oh, really? Yeah? So one of the things that we love in our community is you. Yeah. And we have a new here, so thank for us. Look at your cute little face. You know what? Have you ever been to summer camp? Yeah, maybe? I was a summer camp counselor. So my whole thing was taking kids who were a little shy and being like, 